What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the Break Your Crayons channel. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to render beautifully looking clouds inside of Houdini with Redshift. If you want to follow along, head over to my website and uh, fill in your details here. And in that welcome email, I'm going to have a link there where you can download the VDBs. Um, I've included two other VDBs because I will be getting to something in the next video. But for this video, what I'm going to do is inside of a fresh Houdini. I'm going to hit tab and throw down a file. Geometry, hit enter to jump inside and I'm just going to go to the folder where I downloaded this cumulus humulus little cloud and we'll get this. Um, so essentially what we are going to be doing, or what I was simulating is a cumulus. Humulus is basically like a low level cumulus cloud. It doesn't get very tall. Um, and uh, I've been doing a lot of these little renders. And what I wanted to do was just show you how quick and easy it is to get a decent looking result inside of Redshift. So once we have the geometry here, I'm gonna hit our camera and get a camera there and then what else i need is a rs light grab the light sun and with the new version of redshift they have this new prg clear sky uh, which gives a pretty nice natural kind of result so just before we leave here i'm going to hit Control and one it sets a, a bookmark and i'm going to go to the out context and i'm going to go up here and hit render create render node redshift and I'm just going to leave this as default before we leave here I'm going to hit control and three and then what else we need is I'm going to go to the material network and hit tab and type USD and grab a RS USD material builder rename this to cloud and what I need to do is jump inside delete the standard material Throw down a RS volume and plug that volume into the material. And then I'm just going to grab this cloud and drop it on there. So if I hit one now, it will go to where we left that bookmark. And if I go to the geometry, I'll just rename this cloud. And if I go to the render there, it's been assigned. Okay, so I am going to go to the Redshift tab here and hit render. Cool, so there is our cloud. It's not looking too happy. So I'm just gonna save that. And now what we need to do is I'm gonna close that down. I'm gonna hit three uh, on my keyboard and it goes back to our uh, render view. What I usually do is keep one as objects, two as, oh, I didn't say, it. material, control two, two as material, three, uh, render object material render now inside of here this is our render i'm going to go switch the mode to advanced and i'm going to go to globals and here under trace depth this basically tells redshift how many bounces we should be getting so if i render this again now and it's giving us the same result if i up this if i go to six we'll now start getting light bouncing in between our volume uh, volumes need very high amount of bounces so i'm going to take that to max it out at 30 but you'll notice that nothing really changed that's because our combined method uh, our combined amount of samples is only set to six i'm going to bump that up to 32 and you'll see we are getting a lot more bounces now um, i'm just going to drop the reflection and refraction because we don't really need that and I'm going to leave it as is. Now, if we do a quick bucket render, okay, so this is what we get. So it looks okay, but the one thing that we are missing, I'm just gonna save that and I'm gonna switch it back here. If we go to our material inside the cloud, inside our volume, we have our scatter, absorption and emission. Don't really need to worry about emission right now. Um, but under the scatter, we have uh, anisotropy. And usually higher values are uh, works well with clouds. So I'm going to take that to 0.8. So 
Just like that, we have already a really nice looking cloud and I'm going to click. So I've been doing a lot of these different renders and pretty much when I bring it in, this is all I'm doing. I set up the, um, I grab, grab the volume, make a camera, set up this light. We'll go through this quickly, assign a material and uh, adjust those few settings. And uh, I've been getting some pretty nice results with, with Redshift. Now to take it just one step further, um, the one thing that you might notice is that if you are getting flickering inside of your, um, inside of your volumes, if you go to global and illumination and set the secondary GI engine to brute force and then give it a bunch more rays, uh, this should help any flickering that you might be seeing. So one more thing, I just want to take you through the sunlight. I really like this, uh, the sky model, um, at, um, on the x-axis, it's set to negative 45. This is essentially meaning that the sun is coming in at a 45 degree angle. As soon as you get that closer to say um, 10 or five, this is where we get sunset. And then if it's at full 90 degrees, then it is coming from top down and um, it's, it's basically midday. So uh, let's set it, uh, let's just keep it at 45. And then on the Y axis, if you start rotating it around, um, you can basically swing the sun around. Let's try get it into view. Let's go minus 10, uh, 10, and then minus 20. There it is, there's the sun. Just like that. So we're getting a nice backlit cloud here and let's just bucket render that. So we're getting a nice backlit cloud. Yeah, you can see the volume is passing through and giving us some nice detailing. You'll notice that uh, there is a fair amount of noise. You go to redshift denoising and if you go, I'm just gonna stop the render. If you enable this and go to Intel open and then if we open up this and if we, this is the bucket denoise overhead. Uh, what I'm going to do is set this to zero. So what it means is that it's going to wait until the very end of rendering this image before it denoises. If this is set to 10, then, uh, or, or any kind of value after um, it renders one bucket, then it's gonna wait and denoise that bucket. So uh, I recommend setting that to zero. Um, we've already saved this, so let's do another bucket render. So you can see it's rendering and it still looks the same because it hasn't denoised it yet. But as soon as it's finished, voila. So now the noise is gone and we get a nice clean image. Now, uh, just to caveat this, I don't actually render with the denoise. I denoise in post with a piece of software called Neat Video. It is by far the best denoiser. And I think a license for After Effects is like 80 bucks. So definitely check that out. It just gives me more control. I don't use these denoising, but it does definitely help give you a nice clean image. So that's the denoising. So with that, uh, just some other things that can help combat noise is the unified sampling. Uh, usually if you lower this, it will give you uh, cleaner results, but it is going to take longer to render. So keep that in mind. From some of my reading, the Optex denoiser is better for previewing, but when you go for final render, the Intel Open Image denoise does give you a better result. So one last thing I wanted to show you was just inside of this RS sunlight. Um, apart from moving the sunlight around, you've also got these other controls, red, blue shift, saturation, turbidity here I like to play with because that's essentially the amount of haze. So if we just get our sun into a decent position, let's go 20 so we can see it there, getting this nice backlit uh, cloud. If you pump this up to say 10, it's going to say how much haze there is. And if we lower this even more, we start to get that nice kind of sunset vibe with uh, lots of atmosphere. Um, so if we take it from uh, 10 to two, you get a lot of that um, 
blue color coming back because the sun isn't going through so much haze. Uh, but as you start to pump this up, uh, it gives you a really nice kind of natural feel. So I play with that quite a lot. One thing I wanted to share is this cloud here. Uh, I've included it in the downloads that we have. And this was actually rendered in Blender. And it's blowing my mind how epic Blender can render clouds. And I'll do a very short uh, tutorial next up, walking you through this. But a friend of mine has been helping me quite a lot and uh, I'll point you towards his stuff as well. So guys, since I recorded this video, I have learned an insane amount of new things thanks to a couple of new friends that I've made. If you're interested in learning more about simulating clouds and rendering them, please consider subscribing. I've got a lot of new content coming out and uh, I'm pretty damn excited about it. I've just like 10 x my workflow. So uh, stay tuned. Got any questions, drop them below. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers.